One of my responsibilities as a reviewer is to make sure that you guys know what my personal preferences are so when I express an opinion, you can know whether you agree or disagree with that opinion. And I've made it known repeatedly <laughs> that my favorite FPV cameras are CMOS sensor with wide dynamic range like the Runcam Eagle or the Foxier Predator. But lots of you guys out there don't agree. You like the traditional CCD sensor image of, well, the Runcam Swift, which is the camera we're looking at today. I don't know what's wrong with you, but that doesn't mean I'm going to ignore you. We're looking at the Runcam Swift today, and we're looking specifically at the Runcam Swift Micro, and we're going to see four different lenses that you can get on the Runcam Swift Micro. A GoPro-style 2.5mm lens, a 2.3mm lens, a 2.1mm lens, and a micro-style 2.1, I think it is, millimeter lens. We're going to compare all four of these cameras and look at what the differences are between them. And... We're also going to look at a change that Runcam is making to their cameras that's going to change the... You see this thing? Yeah, yeah it's going away. And that's going to make some of your lives much better and some of your lives harder. Stay tuned. This is the Runcam Swift Micro V3. And I believe that Runcam was the first to do this micro form factor. Obviously, micro cameras have existed for a long time, and they were all basically garbage. Runcam took, I think it's the exact same sensor that's in the bigger cameras, and they put a much, much smaller case on it. In fact, there really isn't a case. And they put a smaller lens on it. This style of lens has what's called an M8 thread versus the M12 thread that's on the larger cameras. And what you got was a camera with equal image quality. Well, we're gonna compare this lens with some other full-size lenses later in the video side by side, and you'll judge for yourself how the image quality is. But let's say, I don't think anybody would argue, these lenses, these cameras are much, much better than the cameras, the micro cameras that came before them, which were just such a, it was a total crapshoot to be honest. Now, any micro quad can have a really decent looking, if not really excellent looking image with a super small ultralight uh, camera and to be honest, a lot of people are putting these on five inch quads because why wouldn't you want to save a few grams of weight if the image quality was just as good, right? And another advantage of these cameras is that they don't stick out very far. It's a lot easier to kind of tuck them behind the standoffs so that they're more protected in a crash. Win-win, right? Well, that makes Runcam's latest decision all the more interesting because this is the Runcam Micro Swift 3 but wait, I thought this was the Runcam Micro Swift 3. I'm a little confused by your naming convention, Runcam. This is the Runcam Micro Swift 3, and it's got, you can see here, an M12 thread lens. In case it's not obvious, this is, in fact, the exact size of lens that comes on the larger cameras here. You can see right here, here's a lens from, a, I don't know what camera it's from, but it's a full-size lens. And although the front of the lens is smaller on the run cam, you can see it's a much smaller, but the thread is exactly the same. It's exactly the same size thread. And that means that the optics can be bigger, the image quality can be better. Well, again, we're gonna go later in the video to a side-by-side -side and you can judge for yourself. Here we've got the Micro M8 thread 2.1 millimeter. Here we've got the M12 thread 2.1 millimeter. Here's the M12 thread 2.3 millimeter. And here is what they're calling a GoPro style 2.5 millimeter lens. Let's take a look outside at the actual images from these cameras. And again, bear in mind, these are all on default settings. So they should all be basically the same. They have all the same sensor, right? So they should be the same. Any differences you see should be related to the images, but especially look for things like differences in the field of view and in the fisheye effect and so on. Let's take a look. So here we've got all four of the lenses and cameras in this test in the upper left, the 2.3 millimeter Micro Swift, in the upper right, the 2.1 millimeter Micro Swift, in the lower left, the 2.5 millimeter quote unquote GoPro style lens, and in the lower right, the 2.1 millimeter Micro M8 lens. And as we go outside here, let me tell you a few of the things that I'm trying to show you as they hold the camera in various locations.
Let me remind you that you can go to the lower right and choose to play back at one half and one quarter speed using the gear icon if you're watching on YouTube. I think you can only do that on desktop if you want to get a better look. One of the things I want you to look at here is the uh, detail in the shadows under the trees as I move the camera to the left to see if any of these are doing better or worse at capturing shadow detail. Now I'm also looking at lens flare and you definitely see that the micro lens does a much worse job of lens flare than the other three. Uh, and that's also affecting the exposure when I aim the camera back over at the trees. So that may affect the shadow detail. Yeah, we just get some general, you know, stuff. <laughs> Have a look at the 2.5 millimeter GoPro lens. Many people say that these GoPro lenses do a better job at like contrast, color clarity. I don't know about that myself, but see what you think. As we walk past this way, I aim at these fence pickets. And the idea here is that you can kind of get a sense of the fisheye effect or lack thereof as they move past the camera and go out of frame. Now I'm going to aim up at the underside of the porch so you can see, the more, again, the shadow detail uh, and how the sun's lens flare affects the exposure algorithm. Here I'm aiming at the trees to let you see how much detail the cameras are picking up. It's a little hard to tell with the DVR whether you can really see the difference. This is the exposure check where we see how quickly the cameras adjust to the exchanges in lighting. They should be pretty much the same here. They're all exactly the same sensor and exactly the same settings. And finally, we're going to go back behind the barn and look at some dappled sunlight and see how they handle that. And we'll also check the uh, field of view and the, um, the sort of fisheye distortion. I want to remind you, you can go back. I'm going a little fast through here. You can go back, obviously, and pause it and look at it as much as you care to. Here you can see bright stuff in the foreground and a little bit of shadow detail as you move uh, to the further away. You can see how they're handling that. And also here, I'm trying to show you the field of view by holding the camera very, very steady and letting you see how wide an angle is, the angle is between these different lenses. To my eye, the 2.1 micro has the widest field of view, followed by the regular 2.1, then the 2.3, then the 2.5, which is what you'd kind of expect. Finally, I'm going to do a test here to show you the fisheye effect on the lens. I'm going to move the camera sideways across these boards, and I want you to watch the boards as they go near the edge of the frame and see which ones stay straighter versus which ones get all sort of wobbly and bent out of shape. All right, well, you probably want to go back and freeze frame some of this. Check it out again. Look at it to your heart's content. And then come on back and keep watching, and we'll finish up the video. Uh, now, I hope that comparison was useful to you. Uh, but I got to say, ultimately, you have to fly these lenses to really form an opinion on which you're gonna like the best. And I can't even take flight footage and show it to you because it's really the experience of being in the goggle and flying it that you really have to just fly it. And I would suggest if you are flying on like a 2.5 millimeter lens that you try a camera just on your next build, get like a 2.1 and see, and probably you're gonna find it a little disorienting at first, but what I, at, my whole FPV life has been a progress of going from 3.2 millimeter, which is where I started, to 2.8, to 2.5, to 2.1. I've just, every time I've gone to a wider field of view, I've liked it better. And going back the other way has never made me happy. So I would say if you're, if you're not already down to like 2.1 or 1.8, definitely give it a try on your next build and see if you don't like it better. But... There are more differences between these cameras and the cameras that came before them than the lens. There's one difference that's really notable, and, I, and some of you are going to love it and some of you are going to hate it, and it goes back to this. Right here, where normally there would be the pins for the little joystick adapter, instead it's got a TX and an RX pin. And Runcam has gotten rid of the joystick adapter on these cameras. So how do you like configure the brightness, the contrast, the OSD? The answer is that you do it through your flight controller. Betaflight 3.3 has the ability to talk directly to these cameras via a serial interface. Now let's be clear, this is not the camera control function that you may be familiar with. The cam, cam you know, the cam C pad on some flight controllers, that is trying to emulate 
an analog joystick. And sometimes it works pretty well and sometimes it works pretty badly. If you've ever tried to get the camera control function working and failed, just couldn't get it working, or you had to play around in the command line a lot, that's what this fixes. This is guaranteed to work because it's just a serial interface that you wire up to a UART on your flight controller and then it just talks. I'll show you how to use it in just a minute. The downside of this is that you can't use the joystick anymore. What if you don't have a spare UART on your flight controller? It's just not, you know, you used them all. What if you just don't want to do it? What if you're on the bench like me and you've got a bunch of these cameras and you need to set them up for a test? Well, here's what I've done. Look at this. This is a flight controller. The actual flight controller, in case you're wondering, is Omnibus Fireworks. Uh, it's a pretty cool flight controller. I've got a review of it coming up on my channel eventually. And I've essentially wired it up with a receiver. And I've, I've wired this video output where the, um, where the video transmitter would usually go. And I've wired this camera plug header. And what I do is I plug the camera in <laughs> and I plug a battery in and I get my transmitter and I use my transmitter sticks to adjust the camera. And that is way more annoying than plugging in that little joystick adapter, especially if you're doing a lot of work in the, in, on the bench. If you've got a flight controller and you don't have a spare UART, you're kind of out of luck. And I asked Runcam if they plan to make a joystick style adapter for these cameras with the TX and RX pads. And they said, no, they could do it. They could just, it would have a little tiny serial interface in it and it would tell the camera what to do. They said no. So this is a step forward in a sense, but for some of us, it's going to be an unwanted step. And you got to know, Runcam's answer is basically, if you want to use the old analog style joystick, just buy a camera that has one. And that's why I've made it. So this in the in the description of this video, you'll find a link to a spreadsheet, which is my uh, FPV camera master spreadsheet with all the specs for all the cameras. Well, as many as I can. It's hard to keep it up to date. And I've added a column for whether the camera has the old style analog uh, joystick or the new style serial interface so you can determine. But all of Runcam's new cameras seem to be having the serial interface and my guess would be that they're phasing out the analog one and we all just got to kind of get with it. Let me show you how this works because it is pretty freaking cool. I think you're going to like it. The physical wiring is not that complicated. You wire the TX and the RX pin from the camera to the RX and the TX pin on any spare UART on your flight controller. I've actually got a video on setting up a, a Runcam camera control adapter, which is a little adapter board that makes any camera able to do this, the old style analog ones. And you can reference that if you want to see how to wire this up. But if you've ever wired up any other serial peripheral, TX to RX, RX to TX, you're basically done. Then you go into the ports tab in Betaflight Configurator and in the peripherals column, you select run cam peripheral on that UART and you're good to go. Then how do you actually access the menu? This is the part that nobody ever seems to show this part. So I'm going to. The way it works is you center the throttle. So you need to be at mid throttle and you push the throttle to the uh, yaw to the right. And you can see here on the screen, it says remote mode. When you're in remote mode, your transmitter is the little joystick, the little clicky joystick that's controlling the camera OSD menu. So you, uh, you use the right joystick, pitch and roll. If it's mode one, I'm not sure how it works in mode one, to be honest. I guess it's not the right joystick. In mode one, you gotta mix it up. It's pitch and roll. So pitch and roll go up and down. And to click the mouse button or the little joystick button, you push to the right, yaw right. So here, if I yaw right, you can see here I am in the menu and I can do anything in the menu that I normally would do, like image adjust here, I'll click and I can adjust all of this stuff. I can do everything that I normally would do. Okay, return, click and exit, click. Yeah, so you see, it works just like that. There's a function here that I want to show you that uh, many people don't know about. These newer Runcam cameras come with scene presets and you access the presets by pushing right on the joystick and holding it. Again, you need to be in remote mode. So you're, you're passing through your joystick. If you do that, it'll switch. Uh, right now it's in, hang on, I can't even read it. Light tracks mode for if you're racing on a light tracks. It's got outdoor mode. It's got indoor mode. 
It's got cloudy mode, twilight mode, and personal, which is your personal settings that are, you can tweak. And you can jump between these presets easily by going into camera control mode and then pushing this to the right. That's kind of cool. I think a lot of people don't know this exists because who's going to plug in their joystick when they get to the flight field and make these changes? But with camera control, it's very easy to switch these presets around uh, before you fly and you're ready to go. The other thing that many people don't know is that to adjust the, uh, the OSD, like the here's the pilot call sign, and this camera also has battery voltage monitoring and other things which I'm not using because I usually use Betaflight OSD, but it does have an on-screen display with voltage monitoring if you don't have an OSD on your quad. You press up for two seconds to access the OSD menu, and that lets you turn on those individual OSD elements, change your call sign, and so forth. Let me go down here to exit. The last thing to tell you is you need to leave remote control mode before you start flying. Now you can fly. Well, there you go. That is the Runcam Swift Micro and all of the possible lenses that you can have on it. Did, did the Micro M8 lens look worse or better than the bigger ones? Did it? Surely it didn't look better. How'd you like the GoPro lens? Do you think the, the better image quality showed? It's a lot bigger and heavier and sticks out further. And let me tell you, that GoPro lens definitely breaks easier in a crash. So is it really worth it? I don't know because I'm recording this before I edit the video and I haven't actually looked at the results yet. So I'll talk you through the results in the editing process and you'll come to your own conclusions, of course. All links to all of this stuff is in the video description. And don't forget the link to my spreadsheet of all all the FPV cameras out there, all the specs and stats for all of them are in that spreadsheet. Again, linked in the video description, so you can check that out if you don't want one of these. I also have a video I just did recently where I talked about the Foxier Eagle versus uh, a couple other CMOS cameras, the new Sparrow from no, the Runcam Eagle, sorry. The Runcam Eagle versus the Runcam Sparrow Pro. And I'm also got another video I'm going to do very soon showing a Swift, uh, a, an Eagle, a Sparrow, a Monster, head to head and side to side instead of, yeah, there's a lot of camera comparisons coming up. So look for those coming soon or already out and happy flying.